Utilitarianism. In its simplest form utilitarianism is a theory that says that you should decide what you do in order to provide the most happiness and the least pain in a situation. It is therefore hedonistic, it is centered around pleasure. As you look at all the different possible outcomes of a situation to see where pleasure and pain will be balanced the best, it is consequentialist or teleological. As the outcome of a different ethical question will be different each time, it is relativist. Jeremy Bentham, 1748-1832, stated that naturally we are ruled by two key things, pleasure and pain, two basic instincts. Nature has placed mankind under the governance of two sovereign masters, pain and pleasure. It is for them alone to point out what we ought to do as well as to determine what we shall do. Bentham, Introduction to the Principles of Moral Legislation, 1789. Bentham said that we need to look at the possible things we might do and the various outcomes and calculate how much pleasure and pain they might create, finally choosing the one that best maximizes pleasure and minimizes pain. His approach is therefore quantitative. He said we need to consider seven different factors, his hedonic calculus or the philosophic calculus. 1. Intensity, how great the pleasures slash pains will be, 2. Duration, how long the pleasures slash pains will last, 3. Certainty, how likely certain outcomes are, 4. Propinquity, how near to you the pleasures slash pains will be, i.e. how much they will affect you personally, 5. Fecundity, how likely the pleasures slash pains will be followed by similar pleasures slash pains, 6. Purity, how likely the pleasures slash pains will be followed by the opposite types of pleasures slash pains, 7. Extent, how many people will be affected by it. General Advantages of Bentham's Utilitarianism It has method in its application of the of the hedonic calculus. It is a morally academic approach that seeks the fairest result. The calculus is thorough in its consideration of measuring aspects of pleasure. Criticisms of Bentham's Utilitarianism You cannot predict the future so the calculations cannot always be accurate. Pain can be good and pleasure can be bad, therefore utilitarianism can be contradicted. There are certain things that are intrinsically good or bad, so there is no reason to do calculations each time. Should animals be considered in the equation? The environment? Some would say that we have a particular obligation to our family. The majority may sometimes be corrupt, for example two prison guards who got pleasure out of torturing a prisoner might be allowed to do it under Bentham's utilitarianism. Mill's Utilitarianism John Stuart Mill, 1806-1873, was uncomfortable with some of the implications of Bentham's utilitarianism. He suggested that utilitarian principles could be used to make rules of thumb to live by. He took a qualitative approach, some pleasures are more valuable than others. He divided pleasures into higher pleasures and lower pleasures. Higher pleasures are things such as poetry and music, lower pleasures are things such as eating and drinking. He said that it is better to be a human being dissatisfied rather than being a pig satisfied, better to be secretes dissatisfied than a fool satisfied. J. S. Mill, Utilitarianism, 1863, Mill felt that we should aim not for pleasure but for happiness, the general happiness of society. Act versus Rule Utilitarianism Bentham is sometimes referred to as an act utilitarian because in his view each time you need to consider each act individually. Mill relies on rules more, and is sometimes known as a rule utilitarian. However some scholars are uncomfortable with this as Mill advocated following general rules that could be broken when necessary. He is therefore sometimes known as a weak rule utilitarian. By contrast strong rule utilitarianism would say that utilitarian principles should establish rules that should then never be broken, which might become an absolutist theory. Happiness, it seems right that happiness is given intrinsic value. How can happiness be a bad thing? Harm, utilitarianism seems to be in line with our intuitions that harming people is intrinsically wrong. Greatest good, it does follow from the above that the right course of action is the one that leads to the most happiness and least harm. It makes sense. Easy to use, weighing up the positive and negative effects of our actions is straightforward, we learn to do this from our early childhood onwards. Anyone can apply the principle of utility. Secular, utilitarianism doesn't rely on specific beliefs about God. 
democratic, the fairest way to run a country is to balance everyone's differing interests. We see this happening in all modern democracies, governments use the principles of utilitarianism to determine what is right. Objective, the positive and negative consequences of our actions can be measured. This gives us an objective, independent way of deciding on what is right and wrong. Universal, the principle of utility, reducing harming and increasing happiness, is universal, and applies in every culture. General disadvantages of utilitarianism unpredictable, you can't actually know what is going to happen in the future, so it is wrong to base our ethical choices on what may or may not come about in the future. Immeasurable, you can't assign a value to an amount of pleasure. It is impossible to compare the pleasure of getting a new job with the joy of having sex or the satisfaction of washing your car. People can't be trusted, if you get rid of rules and allow people to choose to act in the greater good, they will actually act selfishly then try to justify their actions by claiming they were in the greater good. Wrong. Utilitarianism is just wrong about ethics. Egg. A group of policemen passed around photos of an abused woman for their own enjoyment. When it was exposed, the consequences were very bad. But would it have been right if no one else found out? It wasn't the bad consequences that made it wrong, it was the act itself. Subjective, we all have different definitions of happiness. Tyranny of the majority, for example. If most people feel strongly against homosexuality, this would justify laws against practicing homosexuality. This is confusing what is popular with what is right. How is utilitarianism compatible with Christianity? Utilitarianism promotes selflessness. Bentham stated that it isn't about a single person's happiness but rather the greatest happiness for the greatest number. Christianity promotes love your neighbor as yourself and other selfless teaching. Utilitarianism is based around making people happy. Many argue that religion is also based around making people happy through re-establishing a right relationship with God. Mill believed his version of utilitarianism captured Christianity's golden rule treat others as you wish to be treated. Both strong rule utilitarians and Christians believe in absolutist and deontological rules. For example, do not kill is both in the Ten Commandments and strong rule utilitarianism's principles. How isn't utilitarianism compatible with Christianity? Although rule utilitarianism is based around the idea of creating happiness through rules, these rules are derived from the greatest happiness for the greatest number not from divine command. Genesis 1:26 states that all humans were created in God's image making them equal, therefore all humans require equal treatment which utilitarianism fails to deliver. God has no part in utilitarianism, it is entirely based upon human rights. An act utilitarian's goal is to achieve happiness whereas a Christian's is to do God's will. Many Christians follow a deontological, absolutist approach to moral issues and rules, whereas act utilitarians don't, they prefer a more consequentialist and relativistic approach. Thank you for watching. If you want this channel to upload more video on A-level religious studies please like this video and subscribe this channel.